Hello again everyone. This is the second video for the skills section of Offline Readings 1, Unit 2. In the first part of this video series, you have done um, the skill of understanding references and you have started doing guessing vocabulary. This was the practice and let's check together. So, female pandas are called sows and males are called boars. Let's take a look at these two words. Look at our clue here. Are called, are called. So, obviously, sows are female pandas and boars are male pandas. Let's take a look at the next question. Giant pandas are white and black, pa uh, sorry, Giant pandas are white with black patches around their eyes, ears, shoulders, chest, legs, and so on. This black and white coloring may camouflage or hide the panda in the snowy, rocky environment. Now take a look here. Camouflage is explained with oops. Camouflage is explained with an or between two commas. So our clue is or and camouflage means to hide. Let's write that. Question three, the largest pandas grow to be about 250 pounds. And then we have in brackets 115 kilos, about the weight of a large adult human. Now, the pound weight system is a system that is not used in Turkey, um, but it is a system to weigh something, right? So instead of saying 115 kilos, you can say 250 pounds. So our clue is the brackets and 250 pounds equals to 115 kilos. Let's write that. Question four. Giant pandas eat bamboo, but today the number of bamboo forests is not enough for the pandas. This causes starvation among giant panda population. Now take a look at this. In other words, today pandas have very little or no food. So Let's try to understand what the text is saying. They eat bamboo, but because bamboo forests is not enough, they obviously, that's what we understand, they cannot find enough bamboo. This causes starvation among giant panda populations. This must be a negative word. In other words, today, pandas have very little or no food. Starvation is a noun. Our clue is, in other words, and the explanation is have very little or no food, but this is a noun. So we have to write having very little or no food. The clue is, in other words, starvation is the state of having very little or no food. Okay. Question five. Because pandas spend most of their, uh, their time eating tough bamboo, Strong teeth and jaws are very important to a panda's survival. That is, they need them to continue to live. Take a look at this. Something, something, something are very important. That is, they, uh, sorry, very important to a panda, right? That is, they, the panda, needs them, strong teeth and jaws, for survival. And survival means, in this case, to continue to live, right? Survival is the ability to continue to live. And our clue is that is. Giant pandas have large molars because they use these flat teeth to break their food into small pieces. This time, you see in the answer key, uh, in the in the question part, they have already given you the next sentence. But even if they didn't, they use these flat teeth. So this must refer to something. And they break into small pieces with this. So, and it is given here. Molars should be flat teeth, right? So let's write the answers here. Okay, let's go on. Question six. The habitat of giant pandas, i.e. the natural environment they live in, and then there's a comma, is cool, wet, cloudy, mountain, forest, land where bamboo grows. First of all, this is very easy. Habitat, i.e. 
Habitat means the natural environment they live in. Okay, or pandas live in. That would be better. So, the first clue is IE. The habitat of an animal is the natural environment they live in. Because here it's a general thing. Today, giant pandas live in evergreen temperate forests between 900 and 3200 uh, meters in altitude. In the past, pandas lived at lower altitudes, but farming and land development have pushed the pandas high into the mountains. Now, take a look at this. Giant pandas live at 900 to 3200 meters in altitude. They used to live in lower altitudes, but then because of farming and land development, they have been pushed to higher in the mountains. So altitude must be the height from sea level, right? So the height above sea level. What we're going to write there is going to be above sea level. Okay, let's go on. So I've chosen above here. Giant pandas are mostly solitary animals, so it's an adjective. Solitary means something, but it also needs to be an adjective. They spend most of their lives alone. Take a look. Giant pandas are mostly solitary animals. They spend most of their lives alone. Which adjective here might mean solitary? We only have actually one adjective, and it is alone. Can we say Giant pandas are mostly alone animals. We don't say it that way. We say lonely animals. But that is what it means in general. So how can I put it here? The clue is actually how the sentence goes. It's the context. If an animal is solitary, it lives alone. It is alone, right? Let's take a look at the next question. The giant panda's lifespan in the wild has not been accurately documented. Okay, it's lifespan has not been accurately documented, so we don't know about its lifespan. But let's be, let's be a little wise here. What can this word mean? Well, it's, it's, it's got to be something about the life of the panda, right? Let's read on. But Chinese scientists report that some pandas in zoos have lived to be 35 years old. Okay, so this word must be about the panda's life. Sing Sing, who lives in the natural zoo, turned 13, 2000. Most animals live longer in captivity than in the wild. So this text generally is about the life of how long the life of a panda is, the life of pandas. So the clue is the text, right? It's given in the text, the context. Lifespan most probably means not the place, but the amount of time that an animal lives. Question 9. Panda cubs are small, white, blind, furless and helpless at birth. Like newborn human babies, panda cubs cry when they are hungry or need their mother. Come on, what is a panda cub? What can it be? It's like newborn human babies and it cries when, they are, when it's hungry, when it needs its mother. So, right? The clue is like, because we can take it out from here. And a cub is a baby panda. Question 10. Just like marsupials, such as kangaroos, giant panda cubs are very small when they are born. Look at this. Just like, exactly like, okay, marsupials, such as kangaroos. So kangaroos should be a type of marsupial. The clue is such as, a kangaroo is an example of a marsupial. By the way, uh, a marsupial is just like a kangaroo, an animal uh, that has a little pouch, a bag, bag-like part in front of their bodies. Inside it, they put their babies. Okay, imagine a kangaroo. Last question. Humans are the giant panda's greatest enemy. Poachers still hunt giant pandas for their fur, which they sell. Also, leopards sometimes kill cubs. Take a look at this. Humans are an enemy of the giant panda and they hunt giant pandas. So, the clue is our verb, actually. A poacher, then, is it a leopard? 
do we use hunt for leopards and then do can leopards actually sell the fur that's impossible so a poacher should be a hunter human being right a poacher is a hunter and it's a human being not a leopard so that must be b Okay, in the final part of our video, we will take a look at parts of speech. Very generally, a part of speech is to what group a vocabulary item belongs to. It can be a noun, it can be a verb, adjective, adverb. All of these are part of speech. Now, why is this important? Why do you need to know uh, the part of speech of something? Because it will help you, um, one, be able to understand what that unknown word is in a text, but also when you are writing, it will help you write grammatically better, grammatically accurate sentences. So it's very important to have the knowledge of parts of speech. Let's take a look. How can we identify the parts of speech of something? I will give you some clues. Now, when you are doing um, exercises like, you know, fill in the blanks with one word or sometimes in your reading quizzes, you have a reading and then you summarize it, but you have to use two or three words maximum. There, you need to take a look at the given sentence and then the blank. And you need to understand what does this blank need in order to be grammatically correct. There, you need your knowledge of what is necessary for that blank. My daughter has a parrot as a pet. The talkative bird keeps repeating what we say all day long. Sometimes it really makes me mad. I find myself shouting furiously, don't parrot everything I say. Now let's take a look. My daughter has something, right? It, she needs to have something. So parrot is a something. And because it's a something, it is actually a noun. There is another clue for this thing. There's an a here. And a, here there can be an adjective, of course. It can be a big parrot. It can be a small parrot. But after an a, you may or may not have an adjective. But you will definitely have a noun. Okay? So parrot is a noun. Similarly, a pet. Pet is also a noun. The talkative bird keeps repeating what we say all day long. Now, the bird, of course, is the parrot, right? So this must be an adjective, the something bird. Like the talkative bird is like the hardworking student, right? So the tall girl. So basically, that is an adjective because there is a noun here and it is talking about what kind of a noun it is. And then, look, it makes me mad, right? I feel angry and I find myself shouting furiously. Now, furiously answers the question, how? How do you shout? I shout furiously, angrily, okay? Of course, there's a L-Y at the end, so that helps us to identify it as an adverb. It doesn't always happen, though. Just because a word has L-Y at the end doesn't mean that it is an adverb, but it generally is. Early, for example, can be an adjective, okay? Just because it's, there's an L-Y at the end doesn't mean it has to be an adverb. But generally, it is an adverb. So, how do you shout? How does this person shout? She or he shouts furiously, angrily. It gives the manner of the verb. So, it is talking about the verb. That means it is an adverb. Now take a look here. Parrot, we said it's a noun, right? But how about here? Don't parrot everything I say. If you are going to write a sentence like this, normally what do you put after the don't? You put a verb, right? Don't do this. Don't go there. Don't talk to me. All right, so you have a verb. Parrot here is actually a verb. The first one is a noun, and it is talking about this type of bird. But the second one, is a verb. It is talking about, it actually means um, repeating what somebody says like a parrot. So the second one is repeat. Don't repeat everything I say. All right. So be careful. The same word can be 
uh, can belong to two different uh, groups of part of speech. Now let's take a look at this exercise. First thing we will do is try to identify what will come in these blanks. So take a look at the blanks. Don't try to find the vocabulary items yet. Just try to find what's going to come here. A verb, a noun, an adjective or an adverb. What needs to come in these blanks? Pause the video in a minute or two. Try to find grammatically what the sentences are missing. Okay, let's talk about the blanks grammatically and then you will try to find the vocabulary that will go in there. Of course, there might be more than one alternatives for the answers, but let's just try to find what looks good. So, the UFOs start life on Earth, a something of scientists. I will give you some clues. First of all, you have an A and you don't have the something, right? So, this must be a noun. Also, if you have of, the word before of and the word after of needs to be nouns because of is a binding word, right? It puts two things together. Something of something, right? The house of my family, for example. The car of my brother. So it must be noun of noun. And here we have scientists. That's a noun. We know it. This must be a noun as well. So there is a noun here. Something of scientists is working to answer this question. Now, take a look at number two. If you don't have this word in the sentence, the sentence is okay. Something of scientists is working to answer this question. Now, grammatically, without number two, the sentence is okay. But if we put number two here and we answer the question, how? How are they working? What is the... Um, what is the way that they are working? How do they feel when they are working, for example? How are they working? That number two will answer that question. And this means it will be an adverb. They are working how to answer this question. Number three is very easy. Take a look. What is missing in this sentence? We have a subject. We don't have a verb. What did they do? Right? They somethinged a balloon into space. Right? We need a verb. They, some, they did something, a balloon, into space to collect air samples in the what? There is no noun. In the what? They will try to find samples, right, in where? They will analyze these something organisms. See, this time I have a the and then a blank and then organisms. And organisms is a noun. So the blank should have an adjective, right? The adjective organisms. They will analyze the something organisms from these samples to see this time. Look, uh, in the second part of the sentence I have an if. If and then a new sentence I have a subject they. If they, I don't have a verb. If they is something similar to the first life forms on earth. Now there are only a few verbs that I can use with similar and you can guess this one because it's very easy. What is the verb that I can use with adjectives? Perhaps UFOs landed on Earth billions of years ago and brought something kind of bacteria. I have the noun here. Actually, I have a noun group here. So I don't have an adjective. Okay? What kinds of bacteria from space with them? Life on Earth evolved from these bacteria. Again, in number eight, if you don't have number eight, the sentence is full. Life on Earth evolved from these bacteria. So this must be answering the question, how? How did life evolve from these bacteria? It must be an adverb. Let's try to find what vocabulary can come. Number one, a something of scientists. So here we might want to say, a group of scientists. Right? You can also say a team of scientists. right? Or verbs like that. A group of scientists, a team of scientists is working. How are they working? How can they be working? Probably 
they are working hard, right? So, a group of scientists is working hard to find an answer to this question, right? They are working hard. You can also have other verbs, uh, sorry, other adverbs, but this one works well. Number three, they, a balloon into space. We didn't have a verb, remember? They probably sent a balloon into space. Because they will analyze it, maybe it's a better idea to make this. It can be present, perfect, or it can just be past. Into space to collect air sample in the... Where can they collect air samples? Where, did, where is it possible that they sent, you know, possibly where did they send this balloon? And where, where will they collect air samples from? In the atmosphere. In the space. Okay, they will analyze the what kind of organisms can they analyze? Maybe microscopic. No, that's wrong. Microscopic organisms from these samples to see if they, I have an adjective, remember, what can it be? If they, of course, are similar to the first life forms on Earth. Perhaps UFOs landed on Earth billions of years ago and brought, you can say, various kinds of bacteria, many kinds of bacteria from space with them. Life on Earth evolved. How did it evolve? Probably it evolved gradually, right? It didn't happen suddenly. It didn't happen quickly. It happened step by step, gradually. Okay. Now, when you have a vocabulary exercise with blanks, you can identify the parts of speech and then you can find the words. This is the end of the video. Have a nice day.